Hello everyone again. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is another video titled How to Set Up Shipping and Taxes in Shopify. What you're going to learn in this video is how to go in the back end of Shopify and how to set up the shippings based on the basic configurations. I know that this topic, depending on what type of business you're in and how complex your shipping is, this can be pretty complicated. Also, in the year 2020, as of today, Shopify has also updated a lot of the shipping backend features. So many old videos that you might see out there might not coincide with what's going on right now. And that's what this video is about. So let's get right to it. Of course, before we begin, as I mentioned before, if you're brand new to this channel, I would strongly appreciate if you just smash that like button and also subscribe. And if you like contests like this, make sure you turn on that notification so that you'll be the first one to know when I share a new video regarding how to improve your Shopify store, how to better your Shopify store, and just help you build it so that you don't need anyone's help. Okay. All right. So let's get right to it. Okay. So we are at the infamous coffee shop, right? Uh, if you see my other videos, you'll notice that I use this uh, account very very much so we're going to go ahead on this left panel right here uh, let me just make sure that you guys can see the screen because I don't want you to be like hey I can't see all right so on the bottom left over here go ahead and click settings and when you click on settings you're gonna go instead of going to shipping you're gonna go to where it says location that's the first thing these are one of the new steps that you have to do and you go to locations and whatever it is that you have here just ignore that let's go to add location and we're going to call this right here my coffee shop because that's the name of the business. So this doesn't it doesn't matter if you're using um, whether if it's a private fulfillment center or whichever the case is, or if you're using AliExpress, what address would you use? Uh, you could go ahead and just use the destination address, uh, whether if it's a PO box or however it is that you're registered with the IRS. Um, just go ahead and enter this information here. So. I'm just going to add a fictitious address here. Let's see. Anything works in this case. And once you add that destination, let's back up right here where it says locations. The issue is, is that we're still going to have that default. And again, this might occur to you where this random default location is there. Uh, but if it isn't, then you could go ahead and just jump a little forward in the video. But if you want to get rid of this, let's get rid of this somehow and make this one our default location. Let's go to where it says change default location right here. Change default location. We're going to put my coffee shop, press save. And then once we do that, let's go to the old one because we don't want it to appear anymore and click right here where it says deactivate location. And it's going to say, so where do you want us to send it to? We'll send it to the one that I just programmed. That's called my coffee shop. Click on deactivate location and let's go back where it says location here. Okay. And now we have our generic place. All right. So again, if you're doing this whole AliExpress thing, uh, just have it sent to your location so that if people are going to return products, they're returning it back to you and then you figure it out with AliExpress. Uh, if it's your fulfillment center, if let's say you have an actual fulfillment center, then go ahead and put your fulfillment center address here listed. OK, let's back up into the settings. All right. So again, if you don't know where the settings is, you find it over here. And now let's go to where it says shipping. All right. So here in shipping, the first thing that we're going to do is click right here where it says manage rates. And on manage rates, we have some default figures here. Now you might some see some super long different things and you're like, wait a second, I didn't add none of this stuff. Right. So let's pretend for a second that we're only shipping to the United States, meaning that we're only doing business with the United States. So I'm going to go right here where it says uh, Canada, and I'm going to delete this whole thing and press save. So now what this means is that I'm only shipping to the United States. But wait, what is this old address? What's going on? So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and show this detail. OK, let's go ahead and manage this. And we're going to say remove the rates for this location because we're not doing business with them anymore. Right. And let's also say that we're going to manage this and let's also remove them from Oberlo. OK, we don't want that. Let's press save. It's shipping from this destination. We need to charge them based on what your fulfillment center. OK, 
what is the next step? We have some preconditions here and we have some calculated rates that are pre-configured from Shopify that might show up on your store or might not. But this video is just gonna teach you how to manipulate them. Let's go ahead and manage this location called domestic. All right, so the next step what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go right here where it says free shipping and let's go ahead and edit this to see what's going on. Again, if you have a whole bunch of other rates that don't coincide with what you're trying to do, go ahead and just press delete them. Just delete them. Otherwise, edit them. So in many new stores, what I strongly recommend is, is that if no one knows your business, right? Nobody knows your business. You're trying to get some tractions. You're trying to get some new sales. What I recommend is for you domestically to always provide sh free shipping. So you title it free shipping and you could even say how long it's going to take. You could say um, five to seven business days. That way your customers know what free shipping is getting them, right? And the minimum price, we're gonna set it at zero and we're gonna say done. Okay, let's press save. You're gonna notice that in a lot of my videos, I like to save a lot. But that's just giving them an option. It's gonna take five to seven business days. Let's make this more interesting, right? So let's say, okay, it's five to seven business days, but if you want it to get there faster, we need to add another rate. So let's go ahead and add another rate right here. But we're gonna call this standard shipping. So standard shipping, what you're gonna do is that you're gonna wanna charge the client some type of money in order to kind of expedite this a little faster. Or we could call it priority shipping, however it is that you want. And then right here you could say, all right, this is gonna cost you $8.97. Uh, the condition is based on price, where it's also zero to no limit, unless you want to have those limits. But you could put it right there, too. So now, if I press save again, if someone is trying to buy something that costs zero to up, it doesn't matter, they're going to see two conditions, standard shipping and free shipping. Thing is, is that free sh uh, standard shipping, let's go ahead and edit the label to that, standard shipping can take up to three business days. So it's getting a little bit faster to arrive at their house, but they're paying a premium this time, right? Five to seven if you want it for free, then up to three business days for this amount of money, the conditions are the same. Now, the last condition that I'm gonna put hypothetically speaking is express shipping where I'm charging a premium of $21.95 and the condition is also the same based on price. And right here, I'm gonna put one to two business days. Done. Save. So based off of this, when they choose shipping, they have three options. They could either choose free shipping but they have to wait five to seven business days or however long is it that you're setting it up for. Standard shipping, but they have to pay you $8.97 for the shipping on top of whatever the price is. Or if they want it expedited super quick fast, then that's just what it is. It is what it is, right? Okay, now let's pretend that you don't wanna deal with none of that mess and you want Shopify to automatically calculate the rates based on USPS. Whatever their rates are, have them just charge it to the client. Okay, how do we do that domestically? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these two price points and I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna leave the free shipping for now. So I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna say delete this one and delete this one and I'm gonna leave this one here. Okay, but let's dive in into the US cal USPS calculated. First of all, let me just back up one second. Let's pretend that it USPS wasn't even there. Let me press save. And you're like, well, I see USPS on your screen, but I don't know how it's on my screen, right? Or how to get it on my screen. Let's go ahead and add the rate, okay? So we're gonna go right here where it says, use carrier or app to calculate rates. And it's gonna give you options. And from here, you're gonna say, okay, give me USPS's Shopify's discounted rates. All right, so if so, 
how is it that we're going to do this? Well, I ship out using domestic or domestic express. They get to choose one of those two. Great. So whatever that price is, do you want to charge the client an additional amount of money to ship it out? Now, why would you want to do that? Well, have you ever heard of the term shipping and handling? Well, handling is the fact that you are physically pick, pack, and shipping the product, meaning that you get your inventory, you pack it in a box, you have to drive to the post office. All of that is a service. That's called handling. And so if you want to charge handling fee on top of that, you could do that between one or two ways. You could say, hey, just add an extra 10% on top of whatever it is that USPS is charging. Or, yeah, you know what? For every shipping, just add $3. To the order done save now depending on where your customer is USPS is automatically going to calculate the shipping and then it's also going to add the handling fee now take notice that your customers will not see the handling fee as a separate charge okay they will not see the handling fee they're just going to see the flat rate this is just what it's going to cost and that's it but again, we still have options, meaning that when they get to the checkout, they're going to see free shipping or they're going to see priority mail or priority mail express. That's just how it's going to look like. Let's see if we can try to test it out. All right, so we're going to go right here into our beautiful theme, Turbo. Uh, again, for those who are brand new about Turbo, uh, Turbo is my favorite theme. I use it for many, many developments. I'll leave the link on the bio. It has everything that you could think of and it converts amazing with my clients. Right here, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna to go to Coffee Mugs, right? Go to Coffee Mugs. Uh, in Coffee Mugs, on another previous video, I showed how to do all of these nice little swatches. You can check that out too. Let's go ahead and just add this to the cart. Okay, now we're at checkout. I agree with the terms. And then right here, we're just going to enter some generic information, right? Let's go to shipping. Okay, so fast forward here, uh, I went ahead and I added this specific product. Um, and as you can see right here, based on the address that I have provided, you can see that we see at, we have three options. We have the free shipping, we have the USPS priority mail, and then we have the USPS express priority mail. And then that's when you go down to continue to payment, and then that's when the order seals the deal. So that's how pretty much it gets handled from the back end and anything related to shipping. All right, guys. So uh, if you have any further questions related to how to set up the shipping, remember, guys, this has tons and tons of different variations to do it. And just leave me the notes in the comments and you let me know what's going on. But before I conclude, let's create some other scenarios real quick, because in this particular scenario, I just did a setup just for the United States. But what happens if you want to also ship to Canada and to Australia, right? Because right now we could just say that it's just domestic, right? But you don't want to sell to any other countries, right? You're like, look, I just want to sell to the US, I want to sell to Canada, and I want to sell to Australia. So let's go ahead and do that in this video as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need to create a new zone because this zone has already been created, right? So let's go ahead and create a new shipping zone. And this time we're going to call it Canada, okay? And over here, we just type in Canada. And we're going to say, yep, that's you. Let's go. Let's press save. Again, I always like to press save. Then from here, we notice that no rates are involved. Let's go and add one. Okay, this time we're going to use something special. We're not going to use USPS because based on my knowledge, USPS is not so friendly when it comes to shipping to Canada and it could also be a little expensive. I like to use DHL. So let's go ahead and leave this there. And the only option that we're going to provide is worldwide services where I'm going to add the same amount, which is $3 uh, additional handling fee. But that's just me. You don't have to. Right. And let's just go ahead and press save. And that is it. Now, people that are visiting your website from Canada, they're not going to see the free shipping because there's just no way that you could do it unless you have it like that, right? 
and then finally the same way I'm just gonna practice that one more time uh, I'm gonna create a new shipping zone and I'm gonna call this Australia copy paste say yes right there create one Australia is right here let's go ahead and add a rate and on this rate we're gonna say use calculated rates we're also going to use DHL. We're going to say worldwide, add an extra three bucks for my time. Done. Save. You are now also shipping to Australia. Okay. There's a lot of other businesses out there that have much higher complex shipping. And for that, that's where people contact us in order to make this very, very robust shipping. Okay. Um, it gets very tricky. Okay, so now the next step that I'm going to show you is taxes. Uh, taxes is not a big deal, so I, mean, I figure that it's simple, super easy. Let's click right here where it says taxes, okay? And so right here under taxes, by default, because we set up into these other countries, they're not going to collect taxes. Right here, you could see that you could set up the taxes in the U.S. if your business is, is inside of the United States. You click on this right here, and you say, all right, I have several different states going on. Let's go ahead and delete the ones that we are not going to use. Okay, so let's go right here. Let's do that again. Let's delete this. Okay, and right here, as you can see, we have set up so that it is just for one state. Now, every different state has their own unique rules when it comes to collecting taxes. I am not your CPA. I'm not your accountant. So please take this statement with a grain of salt, right? What I'm saying is, is that most businesses, the law is that you're obligated to collect sales taxes if the customer lives or they want you to ship, well, most preferably lives, in the same state where you do business. But let's say if you do business in Oklahoma and the person that's buying from you is in the state of New York, then you have no obligations to collect taxes, nor do you have to you know, report them or anything. But you do have to um, pay federal taxes. That's different. So make sure you remember that. Uh, the best thing that you should do is to contact a CPA, an accountant for your business, and ask them what are the laws for e-commerce in your state in order for you to collect taxes. Should you collect taxes to everyone, or do you need to collect taxes to only those that live within your state? Thank you again so much. If you found this very informative, let me know in the comments. Please press that subscribe. That Give me that, really, really pound that like sign, right? The, 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 give me that thumbs up, right? And that way I can make more videos so that it can help you guys out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.